Assalamu alaikum. So we were discussing some numericals in the last class. Uh, in this class also we'll start with some more numericals. Uh, so let's start. Find a maximum steady state power capability of a system consisting of a generator whose equivalent reactance is 0 0.4 per unit connected to an infinite bus through a series reactance of 1.0 per unit. The terminal voltage of the generator is held at 1.10 per unit and the voltage at the infinite bus is 1.0 per unit. So the equivalent circuit for this system can be shown like this. This, this is the equivalent circuit. This is, the, this is the equivalent circuit of generator. It's the terminal voltage which is held at 1.1 per unit. And this is the voltage at the infinite bus. It is 1.0 per unit. And we have the voltage of uh, this excitation voltage generated as EF, EG at an angle of delta. Sometimes I write it as only E, sometimes EF. But you should understand it, what does this mean? So by, by using the simple KVL in this loop, the first one it is EG at an angle of delta will be equal to VT plus this is the VT plus J 0.4 into I. This is also given in the question that is in the synchronous reactance of the generator is given as 0 0.4 you can see that's over here and uh, the reactance between the infinite bus and this generator is given at 1.0 is also given at here so these voltage are also given so the key in the first loop will be like this so <clears throat> when i calculate this i from this loop if I use KVL or KCL at this point, so this I will be equal to I will be equal to uh, the voltage drop across this divided by this impedance. The voltage drop across this will be equal to VT minus V divided by this impedance reactance. So it will be equal to 1.1 angle of theta minus 1 angle of 0 divided by G1. So here we have three actually three variables. One is theta, delta and eg so we need to use these two equations to calculate this so putting the value of <coughs> i from this equation in this we get eg angle of delta will be equal to 1.1 angle of theta plus j 0 0.4 that is this into i i is 1.1 angle of theta that is this minus 1 1 angle 0 is 1 divided by j 1 is j this j and the j will cancel out so i will open this up in rectangular form it will be 1.1 cos of theta plus g 1.1 sine of theta then this the, this will be uh, 0 0.4 into 1.1 that is 0 0.44 and then opening it up it will be equal to 0 0.44 cos of theta plus g 0 0.44 sine of theta 0 0.4 into minus 1 it will be equal to minus 0 0.4 so separating the real and <coughs> imaginary part you can see this will be the real part and also uh, expand this in a rectangular form we get eg cos of delta plus j eg this should have been sine of delta this is sine of delta so <clears throat> it will be equal to 1.54 cos of theta minus 0 0.4 plus j 1.54 sine of theta because 1.1 plus 0.44 will be equal to 1.54 this will be the real part the imaginary part will be 1.1 plus 0.44 will be equal to 1.54 so this is like this since we are asked to find out the maximum power, you can see from the question, find the maximum steady state power capability. So for maximum power uh, capability, delta is equal to 90 degree. So it is given in, it may be given in the question since I have told you that we have to find out three variables that is eg, delta and theta. Delta is given to be equal to 90. So there remains only two variables that is eg and theta. So when I put delta into this, you can see eg cos of theta will be 0 and eg sine of delta this will be delta eg cos of delta will be 0 eg sine of delta will be eg so it will be j eg 1.54 cos of theta minus 0 0.4 <coughs> plus g 1.54 sine of theta so real part from the left hand side is 0 here it is some value that means this should also be equal to 0 so by equating real and imaginary parts that means 1.54 cos of theta is equal to minus 4 is equal to 0 that means by 
uh, getting the value of theta theta comes out to be equal to 74.94 degrees so eg will be uh, then from this that is 1.54 sine of theta put in the value of theta it comes out to be equal to 1.487 so p max will be equal to eg into v divided by 0 0.4 into 1 that is the total reactance between the two voltage sources that is eg into v divided by this plus this so it comes out to be equal to 1.487 into 1 divided by 1.4 that comes out to be equal to 1.61 1.061 per unit so this is the p max which we are asked to find out now let us try to do one more numerical a 50 years 4 pole turbo generator rated 100 mva 11 kv has an inertia constant of 8 megajoules per mva Find the stored stored energy in the rotor of synchronous at synchronous speed. If the mechanical input is suddenly raised to 80 megawatt from an electrical load of 50 megawatt, find the rotor acceleration, neglecting all losses. If the acceleration calculated in part B is maintained for 10 cycles, find the change in torque angle and the rotor speed in RPM at the end of the period. Now we can see it here. First, we have to calculate the uh, rotor. Uh, stored energy in the rotor and we know that that is the kinetic energy it is given as g into h because de by definition of the h it is equal to kinetic energy divided by the rating of the machine so kinetic energy will be equal to g into h g is the rating of machine it is given as 100 and h is the inertia constant it is given as this 8 megajoules per mv so that stored energy will be 100 into a that is 800 megajoules now <coughs> Find the rotor acceleration. We need to find out the rotor acceleration for this uh, input power and the output power. So we know that acceleration power, accelerating power is equal to Pm minus P, that is 80 minus 50, that is 30. And it is given to be equal to GH by pi f into del square delta, it will be del T square in megawatt. So here also we will use the megawatt. So by putting different values, this is 800, G into H is 800, that we have calculated over here pi is pi f is 50 it is given over here so by simplifying it more so we get del square delta by del t square this is del square delta by del t square will be equal to 30 into 15 into pi divided by 800 it comes out to be equal to 5.89 electrical radians per second square this is the rotor acceleration simply because acceleration will be simply del square theta by del t square here it will be del square delta by del t square by, because del square delta by del t square is equal to del square theta by del t square which we have already calculated so this will be alpha the rotor acceleration now the third part is if the acceleration calculated is maintained for 10 cycles so this acceleration has to be maintained for 10 cycles we have to change we have to find out the change in torque angle and the rotor speed so acceleration for 10 cycles means one cycle for 50 uh, hertz is 0 0.02 seconds and 10 cycles will be equal to 0 0.2 seconds so del square delta by del t square is equal to 5.89 integrate to both sides we get del, t, del delta by del t is equal to 5.89 plus omega naught we know that this is uh, i forgot to calculate here Find the change in torque angle delta d delta by dt okay i should have calculated d delta by dt that would happen like this so integrate we have uh, we get this will be equal to this value so d delta by t is equal to 5.89 t plus omega naught so this uh, this value is actually with respect to the stationary axis so I have calculated with respect to the stationary axis, but with respect to the rotatory axis, it will be 5.89 into t. So delta, delta by del t will only be like this, this value only, not this value. Because this actually we have to use, this we require for what? This we require for the uh, total speed, to calculate the total speed. So the change in delta would have been only this much. Okay.
No, I have not. Yes, I have calculated the change in delta here. So this is this value. Okay, okay. This not delta. Uh, yes. Okay. So first we will calculate the rotor speed. Change in delta will not be this. It should be the uh, differentiation of delta. Change in delta will be uh, delta minus delta. Now we will come to that. First we will calculate this. Uh, the delta by dt will be equal to 5.89 into 0.2 plus this omega naught. Omega naught is actually its rotor speed in radians per second. Since the four pole turbo generator, its uh, rotor speed will be 1500 rpm. And when we calculate that into radians per second, that comes out to be 157.08. This is also in radians per second. So when we add it, it comes out to be 158.257 radians per second. So omega will be equal to d delta by dt, that is equal to 158.257 multiplied by when we uh, multi uh, convert it into this rpm. So we have to multiply it by 60, that's per minute. And when we divide by it 2 pi, so it gets converted into revolutions. <coughs> so it comes out to be equal to 1115.25. Now change in delta, delta square, delta by delta square is equal to 5.89. Del delta by delta is equal to 5.89 T plus omega S. So this will be the respect to rotating axis. This will be zero then. So this will be only 5.89, which I have told you already so delta will be equal to 5.89 t square by 2 plus delta naught this will be the initial value of delta naught at which it would have been appearing so change in delta will be then delta minus delta naught so this would have been rate of change of delta this is not a change in delta which i have already told you that the delta by dt this is the rate of change of delta so you need to be sure about that so we are only asked to find out the change in delta, not rate of change of delta. So please take care of this. So change in delta will be equal to 5.89 into 0.2 square divided by 2. That is 0.118 radians. That comes out to be 6.75 electrical degrees. So I hope you understand understood this. Let us now try to do one more numerical of the same nature. But in this case, uh, based on the same but in this case you need to find out how the uh, real how the active power transfers from one end to another end by changing the different transfer reactants so in this system shown below a three phase capacitive reactor of a reactance 1.0 per per phase is connected through a switch at the motor bus bar this is actually generator this is generator bus bar, this is the transmission line, this is the motor bus bar and here we have used a capacitor through a switch at this terminals of the motor motor bus bar, this is the transformer and this is the motor and the internal reactance of the generator is 1.0 per unit same value has the motor as well so calculate the maximum power that can be transferred with and without the rotor switch closed reactor switch closed so we have to calculate what will happen to the maximum power when we use this switch as open or when we use the switch as closed <clears throat> recalculate the power limit with the capacitive reactance replaced by an inductive reactant reactor by the same value assume that the internal voltage of generator to be 1.2 per unit this is given as 1.2 per unit and that of the motor to be 1.0 per unit. So this is 1.0. All the values are given. This is EG, this is J1.0, this is J0.1, this is J0.25, this is J0.1, this is 1.0, this is also 1.0, this is minus J1.0 when it is used as a capacitor. First, we'll calculate the maximum power when this capacitor is not used. So in that case, this will be an open circuit and this equivalent circuit will be simply these two voltage sources which are connected through these five reactances. So the total reactance of these five reactors, reactances will be J0.1 plus J0.1 plus J0.25 plus J0.1 plus 1.0. So it comes out to be, this is 1, 1 1.1, 1.35, 1.45, 2.45. It comes out to be 2.45, J0.2.45 per unit. So maximum power will be P max, EV by X, that will be equal to 1.2 into 1, divided by 2.45, divided 
at school 0 0.49 per unit. This is without <coughs> the capacitor. Now we use the capacitor over here. When you use the capacitor over here, and the circuit equivalent circuit becomes like this. So the equivalent circuit, uh, the equivalent reactance of these three reactants and two reactants are put together at this point and at this point respectively. So this will be one, one, uh, 1.1, 1 1.35 that is put over here, and this will be J0.1, 1.0, that will be 1.1. Now actually we have to find out that when we calculate the power transfer or maximum power transfer between the two terminals of the voltage sources we need to calculate the transfer reactance between these two you can see we have the transfer reactance between these two but there are other uh, this uh, impedance element between these two reactances so we need to convert it in such a way so that there will be a net reactance between this voltage source and this voltage source and in between them there is nothing because in between them we have another node or we can say in these two nodes there is no node without that transfer reactance so we need to absorb this node so that we have only these two nodes so how can we do that we, we just <coughs> convert this because this is a star circuit into delta circuit that is given over here this is the star circuit j1.35 j1.1 j1.0 so when we convert it into delta you can see it from here this node is absorbed you can see point a is here this is point a this is point c and this is point b this point will not be there uh, this will be replaced by a circuit whose impedance are connected between a and b c and b and a and c you will see between these two nodes there will be no node no unknown node so this will be like this so z1 will be equal to z1 will be equal to j1.35 into j1.1 that is this this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this that is j1.1 into j, uh, minus j1.0 that is this and then plus j1.35 into minus j1.0 that is this divided by since we have to calculate z1 divided by its opposite reactance that is minus j1.0 so minus j1.0 it comes out to be z1 is equal to j0.965 so i have put it over here i don't have to do anything with this you can see there when we have to find out the power transfer we need to find out only this you can see that we can omit these two values and you can still say that the circuit will remain the same because the transfer reactant the reactant that is connected between this node and this node is only this so these two are not necessary to calculate now easy can be uh, this maximum power can be simply calculated to be equal to v into e divided by one uh, this x that is this z1 so 1.2 into 1 divided by j 0.965 it comes out to be 1.244 it has increased the power transfer <coughs> so uh, one more thing that i would like to make you clear that if you uh, see that uh, circuit which we have used to calculate the power transfer I think that is over here. I just know. that is this. You can see even if we have impedances over here, we have impedances over here that is similar to that we have calculated, we have seen which we have omitted. So the power transfer will remain the same because this I will be again equal to E angle of delta minus V angle of zero divided by J this plus this. So this will remain the same. So there will not be any change if we have uh, impedances between this and this. So you need to take this, uh, please, uh, you need to keep this in mind that whenever there is any impedance which is connected between, which is connected between the node and ground, that has to be, that will not affect the transfer reactance. The transfer reactance is only affected by this one. So this is when uh, capacitor is used. Let us calculate it when an inductor is used with the same value. So it will be, it will look like this. So in that case, this Z1 will be equal to J1.35 into 1.1 instead of J minus 1.0, which we have used over here, we have to use 1.0. So we have used here 1.0 into 1.0 divided by 1.0. It comes out to be 3.935. So this P max will be 0.305. It has drastically reduced from the original value as well.
So capacitors enhance the power transfer and inductors, shunt inductors, reduce the power transfer. Similarly, you can use this as a series capacitor and series inductor. You can see when when a series capacitor is used, total reactance will be decreased. It increases the power transfer again. And when a series inductor is used, it increases the uh, this transfer reactance and power transfer reduces. So it has in both the cases it has the same effect. Until now, we were discussing about only the single machine system, which uh, we have a one machine one machine which is connected to the infinite bus. Let us discuss about the two machine system which are coherent to each other. Two machines can be coherent to if they accelerate and decelerate simultaneously. So they are accelerating and decelerating simultaneously. In that case, the power, accelerating power of the two machines can be written like this. PA1 is equal to M1 del square delta by delta square. PA2 is equal to M2 del square delta by delta square. Here delta will be same because they are coherent and they are accelerating and decelerating together. If two machines are replaced by an equivalent, the stored kinetic energy of the machine should be some of the kinetic energy of the individual machines. So we need to replace these two machines by a single machine. But when we do this, we have to take care that the kinetic energy of the two machines should be same as the kinetic energy of the equivalent machine. So this is very important. So then PA will be equal to PA1 by PA2. This one because they are coherent and which is equal to m1 plus m2 del square delta by delta square which is equal to m del, del square delta by delta square so in that case m is equal to m plus m2 m1 plus m2 and h is equal to h1 plus h2 this is the case when two machines which are coherent to each other which are accelerating or dec decelerating together in that case we will use this equation p is equal to m del square delta by delta square but this m is equal to m1 plus m2 the summation of the individual moment of uh, inertia and inertia constant h and h2 will be the individual summation of the uh, inertia constant so this is when the two machines are coherent there may be some instances when the two machines are not coherent so let us discuss that two machines form a non coherent group if one machine accelerates and another decelerates let us say pa1 is equal to pm1 minus p1 which is equal to m1 del square delta 1 by delta square so del square delta 1 by delta square is equal to pm1 minus pe1 divided by m1 similarly del square delta 2 by delta square is equal to pm2 minus pe2 divided by <coughs> m2 so delta 1 and delta 2 they are different in earlier case they are same and we have kept them as delta because they were coherent but in this case they are not coherent so let delta is the delta 1 minus delta 2 is the relative angle between the two machines usually we are always uh, interested in the relative angle between the machines or between the two buses. So, difference in the two times with respect time, it will be equal to del square delta by delta square is equal to del square delta 1 by delta square minus del square delta 2 by delta square. It will be equal to PM1 minus PE1 by M1. This is the relation for this from equation 2 and 1 and 2. So, this will be equal to PM2 minus PE2 divided by M2. Now, multiplying equation 3 both sides by m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 we get so this will be m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 this comes out to be equal to m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into p1 minus p1 divided by m1 this is the same this comes out to be p m2 minus p2 divided by m2 now separating the mechanical power input pm you can see pm1 and pm we have to separate it out and electrical power output from the right hand side of the equation that is from this equation so m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into del square delta by del t square is equal to m2 pm1 minus m1 pm2 divided by m1 plus m2 minus m2 pe2 minus m1 pe2 divided by m1 plus m2 here this contains only the mechanical power this contains only electrical powers so we can model this as m del square delta by del t square is equal to pm minus p where pm is equal to this much this value m2 pm1 minus m1 P, pm2 divided by m1 plus m2 and p2 is all this whole value p is equal to m2 p1 minus m1 p2 divided by m1 plus m2 and this m is equal to 
m1 into m2 divided by m1 plus m2 similarly this m since they are related to each other directly h is also equal to h1 into h2 divided by h1 plus h2 this is how we can remodel or we can find out the equivalent of a uh, two machine model when they are not running coherently now the multi machine system when we have more than one machine and we assume that this is the g1 and h1 of the machine this is the g2 h2 of the machine 2 that is this is the gn and hn of the machine and let's say we have n machine and we are replacing them by a single machine whose uh, rating is ge and whose inertia constant he angle will be the same because we are replacing them by a single generator the dynamics of a multi machine system can be seen as that of a single machine system provided a single machine stores the kinetic energy that is equal to that of the total kinetic energy of the whole machine so this has to be kept in, uh, in mind that means we can replace this by the single machine provided the total energy that is stored in all the rotors of these machines should be same as that of the total energy total kinetic energy of the single machine for example if is if this has 100 200 let's say 300 let's say three machines are there we can replace it by a single machine whose kinetic energy should be 1 plus 2 plus 3 that is 6 600 megajoules so this has to be kept in mind if g1 g2 up to gn be the rating of the individual machine with the individual inertia constants as h1 h2 up to hn respectively and GE and HE be the rating of the inertia constant respectively of the equivalent machine then kinetic energy of the equivalent machine should be the sum of all the kinetic energy of the individual machine that means GE HE GE HE that is the kinetic energy of this GE HE should be equal to summation of kinetic energy of, of all these machines that is G1 H1 plus G2 H2 plus TSH up to GN H1 that's written over here so the equivalent inertia constant will be given as G1 H1 plus G2 H2 plus TSH up to GN hn divided by ge that is the um, we can say rating of the machine rating of the equivalent machine it may be same it may be different the ge be the g base then he that is the equivalent inertia constant will be g1 h1 plus g2 h2 plus tsh up to gn hn divided by g base it's an important result so we need to <coughs> keep this in mind for example if here we may discuss some special cases the special first special case is that if all of them have the same basis uh, same rating and the equivalent machine has also the same rating in that case you can see this g will come out and this g is same this equivalent inertia constant will be the summation of inertia constant of all the machines similarly we may have other special cases but i have only explained this one let us try to do a numerical on this this very simple numerical based on this equation two generators rated 200 mv and 150 mv are having inertia constants 5 and 4 megajoules respectively so this is calculated on this base this is calculated on this base the two machines are put into parallel and are swinging coherently therefore Find the inertia constant of the equivalent machine on the base of 100 MVA, which represents the two machines. So we know that equivalent machine will be equal to G1 H1 divided by G2 H2 divided by G base. What is G1 H1? G1 is this, 200 H1 is 5, that is 200 into 5. G2 is uh, 150 and H2 is 4, that is 150 into 4 and G base is given to be equal to 100. So it will be 1000 plus this 100 plus uh, 600 divided by 100 it comes out to be 16 megajoules per every year i will stop over here i hope you understood it thank you